Those whose personal greed brings in such dutiable goods unlawfully are little better than traitors. I find it particularly repugnant to learn that you once held a commission in His Majesty's Navy. Oh. You, with your advantages of birth and privileges, should sink to such a vile occupation is beyond my understanding. I sentence you to transportation for the full term of your natural life. What do we say on your bloody line, you, sir? Say, is it? Eager are you? You wish you were back in the house before this voyage is over. Yeah. I promise you! No. I know you, don't I? You come to me. Allow me to uh, introduce myself. Uh, Patrick Cassidy, late at the prison house at Willich. Uh, and this is Michael McManus and uh, Terence O'Brien, uh, formerly of the same address. <laughs> Jack Vinson. What's your offence? You uh, being Irish. Uh, we're uh, Limerick men. Uh, so one night we're taking a little walk in the moonlight. And, but unfortunately, it's after curfew. I leave the rest to your imagination, sir. Have you ever been to Ireland? Oh, it's a grand place, grand. Overpopulated and underfed. And the national sports killing each other. Though we've the uh, English to thank for that. So, what brings you on this little trip? I was a smuggler. Oh. Say free trader. Sounds much more dignified. Like a patriot sounds better than rioter or rebel. It's wonderful what words can do for a man or to him. You're a philosopher, Pat. Philosopher, indeed. Well, isn't it wonderful to discover that all this time, when I thought I was just gabbing, I've really been philosophizing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you mustn't mind me, Jack. If you find me gabbing's annoying, you just tell me to shut my mouth. Everyone else does. I was born gabbing. At least my mother said I was. No, but it's a terrible affliction. Apart from being knocked on the head, sure, I even do it in my sleep. On the way. So we are. Off the Botany Bay. May God have mercy on us. They'll move fast enough when I finish with them, sir. Four weeks up, Mr. Flack. Four weeks, and they'll move along the yard like bombers. Aye, sir. I'll make no bones about it. I don't like the crew, and I don't like the cargo. Convicts should be the concern of merchantmen. That they should, Mr. Anderson. Very well. Bring them on deck, six at a time, and fetch the surgeon. Aye, sir. Come on, all this. Jump, you filthy lovers! Let's see you move! That'll do, Mr. Flack. Swab them down. I can smell them from here. Look to their teeth, Mr. Towers. Do you think we're horses? Number 30! Start him, Mr. Flack. Aye, aye, sir. I'll tell you when you can speak. One. What's this about? Out. Come.
so. It wasn't enough for you to be thrown out of the service, to disgrace your family name, but you had to disgrace yourself even further. I always knew you'd come to a bad end. Did you? Always. I never liked you. Oh, I thought when I married your sister, it might forge a bond between us, but you had to turn her against me, didn't you? No, Harry. You did that. And of course, you believed her vicious flights of fancy. I believe the vicious marks on her neck. I was surprised to find that you were part of my cargo. Well, I was just as surprised to find you in command. I was looking forward to New South Wales. But knowing your skill as a navigator, we'll probably finish up in China. <laughs> We're not headed for New South Wales. We are going to the penal colony on Norfolk Island. You know, Jack, what looked like being a tedious voyage has suddenly become full of promise. All right, Harry. Now listen to me. Put me back in those cells and forget I'm on board. Forget you ever knew me. Forget we were brother officers. Because if you don't, if you turn this into some kind of vendetta... You're hardly in a position to threaten me. I always believed your arrogance covered a miserable lack of character, and now I have the opportunity to prove it. You're as big a blackguard as you both were. I have six or seven months to prove my point. That's time enough. Mr. Flack! Sir? Confine this scum to the cable tier for a month. He won't last a month down there, sir. Not with the rats. Not in the dark, sir. Oh, I'm sure he will. Don't you? 41. Get out of there! Get out! Month's up, sir. What month's that? 41, sir, down in the cable tier. Ah, yes. He's still alive. Well, he was at eight bells, sir, when we slung him his grub. Well, let's have a look at him then, shall we, Mr. Flack? Aye, aye, sir. Get up. Leave him, Mr. Tars. On your feet, 41. If you don't get up, I'll have the skin off your back. Now look at me when I speak to you. I trust you've learned your lesson, 41. Well? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Louder! 
Yes, sir. Good. Take him to the cells. That's not the stuffing out of you, ain't it? Sharon, we never thought you'd live through it. It's not a... Holy Mary. What more can he do to you? Three of the convicts have the flux, sir. I'm afraid they're dying. Dysentery is like a forest fire. I've seen what it can do aboard other ships, Mr. Towers. I want them overboard. But they're still alive. Do you want me to lose the whole damn lot? If you can't cure an animal, you put it down. Animal? They're not animals. Mr. Towers, I am in command of this ship. These men are in agony and you cannot cure them. I propose to put them out of their misery. I'll not countenance such barbarism, sir. Everyone aboard this ship is my responsibility. Mine, Mr. Towers. Those men go overboard. Captain! And it's... if you attempt to undermine my authority, I will have you confined to your quarters. Send for the bosom. Hatter than hell. Where did they take those three fellas? Jack? Don't talk. Save your strength. Try to sleep. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
you stay out of this. Don't be a damn fool, Mason. Know what we got here? A real silk stocking gentleman who's finally got his comeuppance. Ain't you, ex-Lieutenant Vincent? Know what he did? He attacked a 44-gun frigate with twice our range, sailed up to her bold as brass while she blew off the gun dick to kingdom come. Oh, you sunk the frigate. I sank it! Me and me mates took her clean through the magazine. Another couple of minutes, there'd have been none of us left, you glory-seeking murderer. <laughs> Intriguing. I'm hanging the man who made this. Well? Mason? Vincent? Very well. Since I can't hang you both for your silence. Fifty lashes apiece, sentenced to be carried out immediately. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Fifty. Cut him down, Mr. Flack. Aye, aye, sir. I need him alive. Can you imagine it? Hello, cold drink water. We all drive yourself crazy. Fifteen days. And not a breath of wind. Bananas. Forty one, sir. How's your back, forty one? Common hot, isn't it? Yes, sir. to drink it. Broken, isn't it? I'm making 41 my cabin boy. 
Cabin boy, sir? Yes, Mr. Flagg, cabin boy. He'll swab out, wash my clothes, bring me my food, and keep this cabin spotless. Won't you, 41? Yes, sir. You don't want to spend another month in the dark, do you? No. I didn't think you did. Get his legs in chains, Mr. Flack. Put him to work. Never break him. Get the middle off to Mr. Flack. Aye, aye, sir. Top middle off! Bring my sextant. By my reckoning, we should reach Norfolk Island in four days. What's the tally to date, Mr. Towers? Fifteen prisoners dead, sir, and five of the crew. You ought to be congratulated. Only if I'd saved them, sir. No, no. The sauerkraut kept the scurvy down. It did, sir. Move, you lovers! Hold your course. Aye, aye, sir. Where the devil has he got to? Forty-one! Forty-one! Put your backs into it, you idle villain! Heavens, I'll make you skip. <laughs> Get up. I'll have the skin off your back. <laughs> 